universe uh, welcome to the review of the final match day um, final round of matches of match day one let's put it that way uh, it was the first time that I didn't see a match uh, only saw highlights which was hunger in Portugal because I had something else to do and yes despite uh, have we having had the clash of the Titans in the evening I think uh, Portugal grabbed all the headlines namely one dude little known from Portugal who again broke some records but I will kind of uh, put them in perspective as well in a, uh, a little a little bit later. Uh, another big change that we have is now that with that win that France had over Germany they are now tournament favorites which also is something that uh, wasn't maybe entirely expected but um, yeah I mean the way it was developing I could see but you know Belgium also won 3 0, but uh, they only won against Russia, so ratings pushed France ahead since they were already quite level. We still have the top three France, Belgium, and England overall. I would say let's get into the games. As I said, I only saw highlights of Hungary against Portugal. From all that I could gather, is that Portugal largely controlled the game. Ronaldo was missing a pretty big sitter uh, late in the first half. Of course, we need to talk full stadium or almost full stadium. Uh, I think 61,000 feet in and there were 56,000 something like that. So, you know, but pretty full stadium, uh, which makes, of course, for a great atmosphere. Although I find it a little bit, given the, say, it's, it's, uh, the situation, yeah, let's not talk about that. But, uh, you know, it's also a great feeling to see a full stadium in many ways. Uh, Hungary basically and it's clear Hungary needs to hunker in because in this group if you go for the jugular you're gonna get hit left and right uh, and they hung on and seemingly they were aiming for this goalless draw um, however late on uh, Portugal found the breakthrough after Hungary seemingly had scored the lead uh, but it was a clear offside goal uh, so yeah uh, the lead came it was a r really messy goal uh, it's, you know, the ball comes to Guerrero who takes a shot, that takes a weird deflection. At first you didn't see Andre Silva was a little bit there too, but he has nothing to do uh, with it. And so it's 1-0 Portugal in that moment. Uh, yeah, it was clearly poor. Port Portugal is going to win that one. Um, that they make it then three, especially that Ronaldo scores two. I think that's a different story. Uh, penalty, I think for me it was, was it the first penalty of the tournament? I even think. Um, for me, it seemed like a penalty, but you know, there are some people that say there's a little bit too little contact like Orban. I think he pulls him too often for it to be not a penalty. Uh, and then Ronaldo converts and it's his 10th goal in the Euros. So now he's one ahead of Platini. And to top it off, he even manages to uh, snatch in stoppage time a second one. So now he's standing at 11 goals uh, over five tournaments. Uh, the goal actually well, had, had a hint of, of, of that after the Silva uh, pass. I think it was Rafa Silva. They have too many Silvas in the Portuguese court. So, yeah. Uh, get it in there around the keeper and it's a route for Hung Hungary that was seemingly never in the cards. Again, he has now 11 goals. Michel Platini had 9 goals. For me, the big difference is, and I know Ronaldo is an amazing player, however, 11 goals over 5 tournaments, 4, 8, 12, 16 and now uh, 21. Uh, is not as many as if you have Michel Platini who played one Euro, scored nine goals in there in five games. There, it, it, it's just a little different class. Yes, good on longevity. Uh, I mean, he's now the first uh, player to score in five uh, Euros. That is a record I think that uh, uh, might hold, hold up much better than this overall goal scoring record. He also is, I think, uh, the one with the most games in a Euros tournament. Also a little bit, you know, this will always favor, favor more recent players because now the Euros got so expanded. Michel Platini, this was an eight-team Euros. And yes, 
um, France probably should have participated in more uh, Euros, but um, they had like this brief peer period where they were really, really so, so superior to everyone else. And uh, Euro 18, Euro 88 didn't fall in these periods in, 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 anymore. So yeah, um, longevity, this is something that you have to definitely give to Ronaldo. He takes very good care of himself and so on and so on. Um, however, the 11 goals record, I never like totals. I rather like goals per game records. Uh, I think that uh, you need to put it a little bit in perspective. So for that reason, um, and it screams for our, for, for our video, who is the best Euro goal scorer of all time, similar to what I've done for the World, the, the World Cup. So maybe that will come at one point as well. Still, congratulations. I mean, uh, I think especially the, the other two records, that those are records that I think will stand and hold up much, much, much better than the uh, goal scoring record that he achieved yesterday. Moving on to uh, France against Germany. I've, I've, I was afraid with poor Portugal win, this might, might be kind of a tight game. Uh, fortunately, it did not necessarily turn out that way. Uh, however, clearly, uh, you could see in the entire game that uh, France was just too ridiculously talented uh, that even a German side that I I still think is underrated but you you obviously they have a they cannot hold their own against France I think the, uh, Germany played overall well but in every little you know in this, those little t t t t details uh, you just could see that France is superior talent that they have goalkeeper I give to uh, give to Germany backline um, the French backline is better but you know the the ridiculousness is you have a Conte that counts already for two players, and then up front you have Mbappe and Benzema now, uh, which is a forward line that, honestly, there is not much chance for anyone else. Uh, if they can keep the team spirit, if they uh, play it smart with uh, minutes played and, and, and so on, uh, France should run through this tour to, uh, to, to tournament. I mean, this was just the crowning glory for France to get Benzema in, in there. And he was brilliant yesterday. yesterday. Yes, uh, I, I think there were more uh, actions from Mbappé to, uh, you know, to please the eye or whatever. But the way uh, Benzema con uh, contributed um, was all always kind of available. Uh, his technique is superior. It, it's just... Uh, it, just doesn't seem fair in many ways uh, for, for, for the op op opposition. The game itself went, you know, I think it was 10 minutes. Germany uh, got most of the control of the of, of, of the game. It had a little bit the initiative earlier, early, early, but you know, it was more like France let them come a little bit. And then uh, starting around minute 15, France took over. There was a uh, head or shoulder. Uh, ball from Pogba that should have gone in. There was a shot from Mbappé uh, that Neuer saved. And then brilliant lob over the defense from uh, Pogba towards Hernandez who makes the cross in. I mean, he has acres of space around, uh, around him. Um, play, play, play of space, Mbappé may, may makes around so Hummels needs, needs to go. He wants to clear, but gets his on his shin. You know, maybe too much panic, whatever it it, 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 it was, he doesn't he hit it clean, he goes into his own net, 1-0 for France. And yeah, I think France then from that moment on really controlled the game, but they held back. And that's the one thing, I mean, I saw a lot that France is boring, the France German book was boring. I didn't necessarily think it was boring, but we know that France, how did they win the World Cup? With a very, very composed performance. You never, I think you saw it maybe for two halves that France let loose. But it was always very controlled. Um, just use your, uh, your gifts whenever you can. And that was uh, exactly what happened yes yesterday as well. I always uh, thought that France was closer to the second bar... Um, a brief spell in the second half. I mean, Rabiot just had hit the post before where he ac he actually has to much sooner square it over to Griezmann. But I think Griezmann was a tad offside. That's the one thing that the French attackers need to be a bit more aware of the offside line. That was another um, 
criticism that can 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 come out on them. Um, but yeah, uh, I think Germany had only late in the first half uh, botched Gundogan's uh, shot, and then I think around the 60th there was like a 10 minute spell where I really thought that Germany could could score Gnabry having the best chance there. Uh, but then they were open, and I think it was more or less the luck uh, of that offside exists now in milli millimeters that they did not uh, concede the second one. There was a great challenge from Hummels, who made up for his own, Angle Mbappé, where he, at first I thought, thought it was, was, was penalty, but if you see the replay, how he really cleanly threw the legs, just goes for a ball. Yes, he maybe gets a little bit of the, of the thing, but the challenge was very well uh, timed. Uh, fair chance, chance to get the ball of Mbappé. Mbappé had scored uh, one goal where it was an offside, and then uh, laid on... Uh, that was egg, 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 actually given where uh, again Mbappé gets the ball, uh, squares it over the ball, Zema, who makes it 2-0. Albeit Mbappé was uh, offside when he received the ball, so yeah. Uh, it probably 2-0 would have maybe fair on the balance. Uh, however, you know, they get the win. Um, my wife was asking, uh, why are they pushing for a second goal so much? And I said, yeah, because you gotta put the game, 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 game away, because in that way there's a lucky punch and you... Um, get the 1-1, one, one, which is maybe not what you want if you can get a win, of course. And I, it was pretty much how I saw the game going. And with that, as I said, everyone has played once. Portugal at the moment ahead of France in, in the group based on goal diff difference. Germany and Hungary uh, out uh, on the bottom. Uh, we also have now a first ranking of the third place teams. But you know, this is the currently third, third place team. This doesn't tell us a lot. I think you uh, will agree with that one, uh, especially since Denmark, Germany and Croatia have all the same in many ways, uh, you know, are all uh, the same situation. So we got to look at projections. Um, the group after projection didn't change much. I mean, uh, with France and Port Port Portugal winning, uh, Germany now has a harder time uh getting like uh of the first place however still uh second or third is very much in in, in there and they, they probably should can get a point of poor portugal um they are still projected to finish in third place uh when i look at the um the ranking of the third place teams i think this is much more um graspable or how it could could pan out sweden germany croatia and ukraine at the moment to finish among the four best third place teams uh, given the projections we had before. With that, we also get a completely... Nah, we can now have barely any changes to, to the tree. I don't want to say a completely new tree. Barely any changes. Uh, the biggest change is that France is now favored over Belgium in the semi-final. And then, of course, go, go in the final, they're the big favorites. Again, um, I think one of the key games in the, in the quarterfinal, with everything pans out the way it is going, that... Um, Spain and England win the group, um, then England would have to play Portugal, which of course is a pretty big matchup. Um, that is not a foregone conclusion, but home field advantage would favor England in that one. And then England has to go to Rome to play against Spain. Um, in this projection, we always let the favorite go through. If England uh, would put up enough points to go through against Spain, and it's a really, 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 really tight affair. Homefield advantage would push them to the title even over France. At least if you say that always the favor with the favor very favor, favor wins. Um, I also have to have to say with Italy again, um, the only the only benefit I can see from not um, uh, from winning the group would be that you have to play London, Munich, London, which is probably much more um, palatable. Then, if you would have to, if you would finish second, where you go Amsterdam, which is not all the bad, but then you have to go to Baku. Maybe that's one thing. But uh, if I look at just the, how the way the tree pans out, finishing second in Group A gives you a pretty sweet run to the semis. And there I would see uh, Italy would go through. Um, as we look for the favorites, I already said, now with this win, France is leapfrogging Belgium uh, and England to move up into first place. So after the first round of matches, um, the big change is that France is now on top. Also, Portugal makes a big comeback. We have, again, a lot of changes uh, below Germany. And again, uh, this 3-3 between Switzerland and Denmark is literally down to 
their soul level that in the simulations one uh, or, the, or, or the other is, is, is ahead. You can see this uh, daily flip-flop between Switzerland and Denmark that at, the, at this very moment they are seen as pretty much identical in chances. Um, and the same goes, you know, for all the Croatia, Sweden, Austria, Czech Republic, U Ukraine, I'm actually quite uh, amazed how Austria is steady at the third 13 and above and below is a whole lot of changes, uh, kind of pandemonium in many ways. Um, what games do we have today? We have three games. Uh, we start off with Group B between Finland and Russia, which I think is a... a interesting one because Russia definitely would need the win um, but Finland and St. Petersburg is also not that far away so um, I would expect a few Finnish fans there which could make it interesting. Uh, Turkey against Wales I think is a make or break game for Turkey. Uh, if Wales get another point there I think Ah, they probably all also need a win. I think this, this is a game where, where both need a win because Wales has to play Italy. However, Italy, if they would win against Swiss, Swiss they more or less have won the group. Um, and so maybe uh, if Wales gets a draw, this could be enough for them. So, uh, God, I see, but I think Turkey, Wales, uh, I convinced myself that this actually might be an interesting one. I just don't like a stadium in Baku. So that was it from me for today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my Sofa universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.